Welcome to the Prayer Motivator devotional broadcast with Daniel White III. We are glad that you have joined us as Daniel White III motivates us and encourages us to simply just pray for the glory of God. Daniel White III is the national best-selling author of over 20 books. He has spoken in meetings across the United States and in over 25 foreign countries. He is the president of Gospel Light Society and Torch Ministries International. Now here's your host, Daniel White III. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Prayer Motivator devotional broadcast. This is number 375. Broadcast number 375. As always, it is so good to be with you today to encourage you to pray. Today, as I always do, I want to share with you a poem titled Our Golden Years. Prayer Warriors by Margaret Cagle. We all have saints in our churches who have reached their golden years. They have grown old while serving God through blessings as well as tears. Many are so physically disabled that they seem so frail and so weak. We don't expect them to do any work though little tasks they may seek. Many dear precious saints of God are great prayer warriors of care. They can't do the work they once did, but they can spend time in prayer. I can't visit for Jesus anymore. I heard one senior saint say, but I think about the ones who do and for these Christians, I pray. Prayer warriors make a difference as they pray for a special need. They are so valuable in our midst. They are precious to us indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, our prayer motivator verse from the Word of God today is Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13 which reads, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Allow me to share with you some important insights regarding this passage from the great theologian Matthew Henry. He said, The Lord's Prayer, as indeed every prayer, is a letter sent from earth to heaven. Here is the inscription of the letter, the person to whom it is directed, Our Father, the where in heaven, the contents of it in several errands of request, the close, for thine is the kingdom, the seal, amen, and if you will, the date too, this day, amen, somebody. We will discuss this passage further in the next broadcast if the Lord should tarry his coming and we live. Ladies and gentlemen, my personal encouragement to you today is that we have to pray and ask God to help us to live right, to think right, and to act right. I don't know about you, but I just cannot live the Christian life by myself, that is, in my own strength. And you can't do it in your own strength either. That is why we need to realize and pray as Zechariah did in Zechariah 4.6. Uh, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. 
whether you know it or not, we cannot live this Christian life in our own power. We have got to allow Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit to live it through us. Ladies and gentlemen, our prayer motivator quote today is from Wesley L. Duell. He said, The greatest privilege God gives to you is the freedom to approach Him at any time. You are not only authorized to speak to Him, you are invited to speak to Him. You are not only permitted, you are expected. God waits for you to communicate with Him. You have instant, direct access to God. God loves mankind so much and in a very special sense, his children, that he has made himself available to you at all times. Our prayer motivator devotional today is part six of our new series titled, Does God Work Miracles Today? I believe this is part six. Does God Work Miracles Today? From Dr. John R. Rice, that great prince of prayer, and my dear brother who is in heaven now. And I look forward to shaking his hand one day soon. In Mark chapter 11, verses 22 to 24, we have in slightly different words the promise of the Savior when he discussed with the disciples the withered fig tree which he had cursed. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, That whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire when ye pray, Believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. That's one of my favorite passages of Scripture. Please hide it in your heart. How wonderful that the Holy Spirit, he says here, gave us added light on what Jesus promised. Compare this passage with Matthew chapter 21, verses 21 and 22. And you will see that in Matthew 21, 21, there might be some reason to suppose that Jesus was talking to the, uh, to the disciples, the twelve apostles alone. But here in Mark chapter 11, verse 23, the Savior plainly says, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. The promise is not only for the apostles, it is for whosoever. If whosoever in John 3.16 means anybody who trusts Christ for salvation at any time, then whosoever in Mark 11.23 means anybody who will trust Christ for a miracle at any time. If Jesus Christ is to be believed, and if the Bible can be trusted, then anybody who has faith for a miracle will get one. Now, friend, it is time for us to pray for our miracle. Remember, the announcer will provide the information for you to send in your prayer request, if the Lord will so lead you to, at the end of this broadcast. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for your holy word that reminds us so clearly that any of us, if we have faith in you, can ask for a miracle and receive it. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Forgive us, Lord, of our sins. Forgive us of our faithlessness. Grant us your grace and the power of your Holy Spirit to truly believe, Lord, and to pray unto you and uh, believe that you will hear and answer our prayers. And anybody who is praying with me right now who needs a miracle in their life, a mir uh, miracle in their marriage, a miracle with their teenager, a miracle with their money, a miracle with their health, a miracle regarding a relationship in the church, 
uh, revival in the church, healing in the church, healing in this country. Lord, whatever the case, uh, Lord, I pray that you would give them the faith to believe. And we pray that you would hear and answer our prayers and uh, continue to hear and answer our prayers and bless us exceedingly abundantly for above all that we should ask or think. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and for his sake. Over the prayer list now, we pray for every pastor, uh, every church leader, every missionary, every evangelist, every mother in the church, every deacon, every Sunday school teacher. Help them all to stand for you in these last and evil days. We pray for our persecuted brethren around the globe, that you would protect them and provide for them and give them courage. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the healing of every Christian marriage and family anywhere in the world. We pray, Lord, for the revival of every local church and your church universal, black, white, red, and yellow, for we are all precious in your sight. And Lord, help us as your Christian people to break up our fallow ground and seek your face and repent. We pray, Lord, for the revival of your church. We pray, Lord, for the healing and an awakening to take place in this country. We pray for your Holy Spirit to repent, to, to cause us and help us in this country to repent, rather, of our sins, our wicked, evil, and ungodly ways, and turn back to you, for righteousness exalts a nation. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for over three million uh, people to come to know you as Savior. Across this country and around the globe, we know that you can do it um, because you're not willing that any should perish. Lord, we also pray that you would save and lead God and direct the President of the United States and all governmental officials is really a mess in Washington and around the globe. And Lord, I do pray uh, for all countries. We pray for the salvation of every country. Have your Holy Spirit to take control and uh, to do the work that you want done. Lord, we also pray for three people who have sent in prayer requests uh, through our ministry at Gospel Light Society. We pray for Awusu in Mumpong, Ghana, deliver him from sin, deliver him from temptation. Lord, we pray for Elizabeth in Nuremberg, Germany, help her friends and family members to get to know the Lord Jesus Christ and go to her church, help her to be salt and light in this world, help us to be the same. Lord, we pray for Awua in Kumasi, Ghana, strengthen him in the faith and help him to feel the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, fill him with the power of your Holy Spirit and fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit. Revive us again. Have these dead bones to live again. Holy Father God, we pray also for the following people who have trusted you as Savior recently through our ministry. And we thank you, Lord, for just a great run of souls being saved and lives being changed over the past two weeks. And we give you the glory, praise, and honor, and we pray that that trickle of two or three or four or five souls a day are coming to you and coming back to you, uh, Lord, would turn into a flood. We pray, Lord, that you would strengthen these in the faith and have them to grow in the faith to become the spirit-filled Christians that you want them to be. We pray specifically for Daniel in Nigeria, Debbie in South Africa, Peter in Limpopo, South Africa. Now, Lord, we also pray for the following people who have been saved for a while, but who have recommitted and rededicated their lives to you. We rejoice with them in this decision and pray that they will keep their commitments to you and be strengthened in the faith. We pray specifically for Kwabi in Ghana, Dixon in Mombasa, Kenya, Teresa in Cade, Eastern Region, Ghana. Lord, we pray that you would strengthen all of these in the faith and save their family members, fill them with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Word, and help them to be discipled, help us to do our part. 
rebuke and bind the devil and his demons and his host, Lord, from them and help them to find a good Bible-believing church in their local area or to, if they can't, to join us on the various opportunities of worship that we have available to them. Now, in closing, dear friend, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, please allow me to show you how you can get to know Him today. <clears throat> All you have to do is believe that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and you will be saved, and like millions of others, you can come to know the risen Lord Jesus Christ for yourself. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Bible states in the book of Romans 10.9 and verse 13, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Dear friend, if you're willing to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation right now, wherever you are in the world, please pray with me the following simple prayer. Holy Father God, I realize that I am a sinner and that I have done some bad things in my life. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life today and forever. Amen. Dear friend, if you have just trusted Christ as your Savior and you prayed that prayer meant it from your heart, I declare to you that based upon the Holy Word of God, you are now saved from hell and you're on your way to heaven. I want to congratulate you on doing the most important thing in life, and that is receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, go to gospellightsociety.com and read what to do after you enter through the door. Until next time, remember, dear friend, Pray, think, do. God bless you.